I get kick in the stomach. Yes. Uh, another KPI that our team monitors is the fill rate of key positions from the top talent pool. And when we started monitoring it the first year, about two years ago, it was 25% of the time. And just measuring it, I think, was a boost, but also having it be a board meeting agenda item each quarter, it is now raised close to 60% of the time a key job is filled with someone from the top talent pool. The rest of the time it may be coming from the outside or it may be coming from inside, but that means that a huge percentage of the time when a key job is filled, it's someone coming out of the top talent pool. And that's what you would hope to have if you're doing a good job of identifying your top talent and high potentials. What information would you give to a company that's never tried this before but was interested in starting this approach? Um, one is to really spend quite a bit of time to define what do you mean by high potential. In, in benchmarking a lot of companies, that can vary. So create a definition that works for you. Second piece of advice would be to really educate um, the managers in the process so that they understand why they're doing it, what their role is, and how they are key in talking with the person about their potential and helping them uh, define their development plan. Another piece of advice, and, and this is a place where we're remarkably fortunate, is, is to have the CEO and the top executive team intimately involved. And that demonstrates a very powerful commitment to the idea of uh, high potential development. So devote resources to make it happen. And intimately link high potential development to the strategy of the company. And that's a place where I think we're quite successful. Our high potential development program is not a bunch of external or internal classes, but it's actually putting people into positions where they can help shape, understand the strategy, and drive the execution of the strategy within the company. So uh, in every one of our offerings, we have a very strong component of this is linked to the company strategy. Thank you so much, Paul. I really appreciate that. Great insights. Obviously, it comes from a very, very strong commitment at SAP. Thank you. Interesting ideas. Developing high potential employees has certainly become a competitive advantage. So, Eileen, what steps should companies be taking to ensure that an individual, and especially a high potential individual, remains engaged in their development? Well, there are really a range of options available to an organization at any point in the process. Um, the thing that I think is first and foremost here is that you have to make sure you have an individual action plan for each of your high potentials and that, and that each of those people is actively engaged in his or her own development and potential career path. You know, somehow we think we keep this hypo thing a secret and that that benefits us and the truth is that the more people, the more transparent that process is and people know that they are in that pool, the better it is for everyone. Um, then you really want to be able to provide a variety of individual development opportunities. Um, those can include, you know, reading, um, you know, key books that you keep in your library, continuing education courses, coaching, mentoring, um, stretch assignments, things that are beyond their, you know, particular role, um, cross-functional teaming opportunities. All of those things can be um, provided to an individual. Then if you have a number of people you're seeking to develop together, like we've heard um, these other organizations talk about today, you can offer skill building workshops and you can offer action learning projects. And one of the things that I really like about action learning is that the company gets, you know, b double the bang for the buck at least. I mean, you, you're having your high potentials work as a team to solve a real organizational challenge in real time. You know, we offer tools and training and resources during the process so they can achieve their goals. But the money that you're investing in their development also has an immediate return um, as well as a long-term return because you're solving a real business problem. Um, some other important things to consider um, is that the best and most powerful learning for adults is experiential. Um, to retain new knowledge and new skills, it has to be relevant, it has to be applicable, and we need to use it in a real-world context. Um, for most organizations, um, the other thing to think about is that an accelerated development pool is usually better than traditional one-for-one -one replacement planning. Um, it allows you greater flexibility for developing the next team of next generation leaders together rather than simply who's going to fill this one particular slot. 
And then this is another key that uh, you know I, I, we try to advise people around, which is that managers need to be rewarded for identifying and promoting their people. Um, there's often a desire to really hold on to the high performers, and, and inadvertently what we wind up doing is holding back their career development. And while this might have a short-term benefit for a department or a function, in the long run, um, high potentials who don't have the opportunity to grow within an organization will likely look for better opportunities elsewhere. That's great, Eileen. In the few remaining moments we have, we've been talking a lot about, uh, up to this point, about what a company can do to identify and develop their people. What about the individuals themselves? How should they prepare themselves for a potential development opportunity? Well, there are a, really a few very powerful things you can do for yourself if you want to advance your career um, at your company. Um, first, you really have to figure out what you really want and, and why you want it. Um, where are you now? Where do you want to be? You know, people who move into supervisory or management or leadership positions just because they wanted to make more money or because they wanted recognition for their hard work but weren't really prepared for the challenges they would face are usually very quickly disappointed and disillusioned. Then, you know, once you've figured out, okay, this is what I want and this is really the, the where I want to go, developing a real action plan to make it happen. Um, you know, there's that old adage about how hope is not a strategy. Well, you've got to strategize. You've got to say, is there a job that exists that attracts me? Uh, is, if not, is there an opportunity to carve out a niche for myself based on, you know, even if it doesn't exist right now? And what are the proactive steps I need to take to add new knowledge, new skills, more tools to my personal toolbox, such as, you know, continuing education or training or, or any of those things as part of that action plan? The third thing that I think is important is you have to let it be known. Uh, if you're interested in new opportunities, let your manager know. Let people who are in, in positions in your organization to help you know. Let them know what your career goals are. Let them know what your plans are to achieve those things. Um, if there are opportunities to volunteer for assignments you know, that will make their life easier and take some work off of their plate, you might be even take on take on those projects and, and that will give you more visibility and more chance to demonstrate that you have talents that people may not have seen. And then one final thing that I would recommend is, is find a mentor. Seek out somebody in the organization that you really respect and admire. Get, you know, get to know that person. Uh, ask that person questions about themselves, about their career path, about how they learn to do the things that you admire so much and let them get to know you and what your aspirations are because I mean these are really the kinds of personal relationships and personal networks that can be some of the most valuable assets to to your career but I mean I really think the key is you have to be genuine genuine about it thank you so much for joining us today Eileen you've given us some great insights and advice on how to make the most of an organization's top talent oh my pleasure Patrick I, we, we've, we've run out of time if we had a theme song you'd be playing right now we, we promise we'll get to all of your questions uh, and we will we email responses to you. Uh, in addition, all, res all registrants will receive an email with links to the recording and slides from today's presentation. More information on developing high potential employees is available on our website at www.caliperonline.com. That's www.caliperonline.com. Or if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us at 609-524-1200. That's 609-524-1200. Thank you for attending today's session, and we hope you can join us again for future webinars.